What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the episode of The Locker Room. I'm here with Pete, Nathan Pete. What's going on, brother? Not much, mate. How are you? Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. A tough loss yesterday. We were just talking about how you're feeling. You know, lost. We were just talking about that. You know, you wouldn't say that the Broncos are a 30 point side or 34 point side better than you guys. So, obviously, a tough loss to take. What's it been like? Yeah, it's disappointing. It was probably the biggest game of the year for us. Obviously, trying to stay intact with the top eight there. And. it was a very disappointing um, performance from, my, from us yesterday. I hate saying that we lost it ourselves, but we were pretty, pretty uh, woeful yesterday. And Broncos, uh, to their credit, they played a lot better than us. So um, that's footy sometimes. And you know, back to the drawing board and you know, hopefully uh, get a win this week. So walk us through the process You know, for a fan listening of footy. What's it like? For, you know, they, they might see you smile, shake hands or whatever with the opposition and you know, exchange pleasantries. But what's it like the next 24 hours or even the next 48 hours for a bloke like yourself, you've you've just the Titans have just lost a massive loss. What's it like for you, like you guys personally as a footy player, going through those emotions of like losing by so much and everything like that? Yeah, it's um it's disappointing. I mean, because you sort of train hard a week, obviously, and then go out, then you dish that up. It's pretty um it's pretty disappointing. It's it's probably even worse if you play bad as well, because then you yeah. go home with a loss and you played you know, horrendous. So yeah, um, you know, it wasn't too bad yesterday. So I'm not saying <laughs> that it makes it easier, but at least you're not depressed twice, I guess. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just you sort of dread going in the train in the next session. We had today off, but tomorrow you sort of dread going in there because you got video and yeah. you're like, wow. But then, you know, the positive is after that, you just put it behind you after that and, and move forward. So, yeah. um, when you're winning, it's you know, enjoyable going on a train, everyone's laughing and yeah. having a good time. You're on top of the world. And when you get a have, you know, have a loss like that yesterday, you sort of. Um, yeah, it's a bit depressing going on the training, but um, like I said, that's footy, and yeah. you know, the best thing about it is, um, it's yeah, you only got a week, and you can sort of you know, have another game again. So yeah, yeah. You, know, you have to wait seven days or so till you can sort of try and fix that performance. Yep, it's the uh, the dreaded like when you get into a video session and you look for the like names across yeah, the. Yeah, I've been there plenty of times. I found my name. I'm like, oh no, here we go. I'm in all sorts here. But um, yeah, as a loss yesterday was pretty disappointing for our, for our side. It's um, funny that you say that you only got seven. You got seven days to like bounce back. Imagine being an MMA fighter getting knocked out, and you've got a fight. Like the earliest you can fight again is like six months. Yeah, and you're just be, um, sitting there going, "Fuck." Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Like that's the sport we play. Like you get a head knock, and you do a couple of tests during the week, and you play seven days later. Like in yeah. boxing, you see, you get knocked out. You can't spar for minimum three months or whatever it yeah, is. And you yeah. can't fight. Like they dictate the rules to you. So yeah. It's a pretty brutal sport, I guess, that we play. So, hundred um, percent. Yeah, it's, it's like I said, it's a positive. You get seven days to sort of back it up and see if you can go again. Yeah. Um, but it can be a long week sometimes as well. It's funny. If I was watching like a game just from like two thousand and eight, um, and I got like pretty much knocked out, and the boys just like picked me up by the back of me fucking jersey, swung me back out to the wing, and just keep playing. And it's fun, crazy to think like not long ago, and I mean you would have been you were playing at the same time. You get knocked out. It was like you were seen as soft if you went off. Like yeah, that's what I mean. Like there's been a few times where I've been rattled, and you've seen the stars, and the trainer will come over to you and just say, just, just don't move, just like take a breath. You know what I mean? So you sort of sit there and get your thoughts back, and you jump back up. I've had games. I remember around the twenties, I was playing at Brookie Oval, and um, I got a haircut day before the game, <laughs> and um, I got rattled in the first half. Got to half time. I was asking like, what? Oh, so so got rattled in half time. Went to the sheds at Brookie Oval and yep. I looked in the mirror. I said, "Fuck! When the fuck did I get in a haircut? I had no <laughs> memory when I got a haircut." We went back out in the second half and we had like a tap set or whatever. We kicked for touch and the, uh, we called a tap. And I said, "What do we do?" Like, I, and I'm a dummy half. <laughs> I had no memory. They said, "No, he's off." I eventually took yeah, him yeah. off. But it's been heaps of games where like I had the little stars float in your head, and yeah, like, ten minutes later what? you just have one still floating around. <laughs> yep. So I just, if I get rattled, I just go to the wing and I just work my way back in to sort of come back. <laughs> come and, back you know, to cut it. Ten minutes later, but hell. Yeah, these days they're pretty strict, aren't they? So. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good thing. Like fuck, man, because like you can't. Yeah, the damage you do on your butt. Oh fuck, no, I don't know. I don't know how you guys do it in the middle. I feel like disrespectful even talking about it. Yeah, like, yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it's, it's not pleasant being the smallest middle in the field. So, oh fuck, yeah. hell. Yeah, what's that like for you? You know, like you know, being a the, the hooker is always seen as like one of the toughest roles in the in the game. Personally, for you, like, is it just something that you've always loved being in the middle there, being a hooker, or? No, not really. I blame my mum and dad. They gave <laughs> me nothing. No genetics, no good genes. <laughs> slow and, yeah, play hooker. That's about all I could play. I'm not big enough or fast enough to play anywhere else. So, sort of got dished up there. And, um, you know, in 20s now, I try to play edge back row. And they just said, no, nah, mate, you're a John Lang. He goes, no, nah, you're a hooker. I said, oh, no. So, I only really started, and my first couple years in first grade, I was playing with Isaac Luke. So, I was more of a utility. Yep. It wasn't until I got the Parramatta, like, you know, four years ago where I had my first year of hooker. First really? Grade. Yeah, so I'm only still like, learning my trade. Yeah, it's like four years. In, oh, 
was it four? Yeah, so oh, fourth man. or fifth years a full time hooker. Whereas before that, I was mainly a hooker and lock. And but you know, we'll just play edge back yeah, road. Yeah. I just play. I was just happy to play anywhere at yeah. us. Um, obviously, yeah, played a bit of hooker at twenties, but. Yeah, I mean, it was really my fourth year. That I fuck, no, I thought year. you were a specialist hooker. Like, it's like a specialist, like, going through the grades, fucking... No, nah, no, nah, I always played, uh, I played, yeah, a bit of hooker in Harrow Mats, and then it was edge back row and SG ball. Fucking hell. And then, um, yeah, it wasn't until under 20s where, yeah, I was playing edge back row, and John Lang said, <laughs> no, no, I want you to be a hooker. And I was like, oh, well. So then, yeah, and then oh, from man. there, but even then, like I said, I yeah, went through the South ranks, and because Isaac was in front of me there, I was, yeah. and Bo Falloon was there, I was more just playing, like, a lock, and then I ended up debuting at lock. Oh, really? Yeah, 2011, I played... 20 games in first grade. I didn't play hooker once. Played lock all year. Fucking hell. And um, then t- 2012 and 13, I sort of in between both yep. roles. Sometimes I played at edge when like Benny Teo and that were playing at origin. I was starting to left back row and that. Fucking hell. That's so, fucking crazy. Yeah, then I ended up yeah, you played, you played for fucking your state at hooker, bro. That's, yeah, you know so, what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Yeah, so I'm, yeah, I'm still learning my trade. There's still a lot of things I can improve on as a dummy yeah. half, but um, that'll come with time, I guess. So take us back to a young PT. Where'd you grow up? Obviously, New South Wales, Campertown. Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, my mum my and dad went together when I was young, so my old man lived at uh, Malabar, uh, out near Larpa, yep. Larpa Bruce, and, um, and then my mum was at Leichhardt, so sort of grew up in b- between both areas. I was South Junior, then I went to be our main comp for a couple of years, and then yep. come back to the South comp and um, under 15s and played with Adam Reynolds, and yep. boys at Larpa Bruce, yeah, and then went through the ranks there at South. And so, like, what was it, I guess, a young kid growing up, what was it like for you? You know, just normal upbringing, played footy, loved it, or was it, you know, didn't play much footy, played other sports? What was it like for you? Oh, uh, yeah, I just played from under sixes onwards, yeah. Mum took me down the year before, didn't want to play, and then took me down again the next year, and I said, no, no, I want to play. So, yeah, sort of went from there, and it was pretty average. Well, not average, yeah, pretty, pretty, you know, just average player. wasn't anything special. Yeah, then yeah. Probably wasn't until, you know, under six, 15s, I sort of realised I wasn't too bad and then yeah once i made how mats and that and even i still doubted myself then but it wasn't yep. probably till yeah 17 where i was playing your know, second year of sg ball where i thought oh i've got something i, I can could, do I something have, i could have a cracky yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. and that's when you start really getting into footy and really enjoying it yeah so was it did you always love footy though Do you know what i mean yeah some yeah, folks love yeah. it i was just sleep with the footy and i was one of those oh kids really <laughs> with footy and um yes yeah, so who's your team south no nah, i was roosters man because brad Fittler was my favorite player growing up oh so, really yeah so um, I just go for the Roosters. I sort of, I think I got to about 14, 15, and I stopped. Was once you play how mats at South, you, you tend to hate the Roosters. So. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I was a yeah Freddie fan at the time. Yeah. Far out. So you would. So as soon as you started playing the Roosters, I mean Rabbitohs, were you just like, all right, I've got to, I've got to get a stop following, or you kind of secretly were still. Kind no, of no. Like, yeah. Once you once you start playing how mats, you can't really go they for someone else. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. South and Roosters. You sort of taught from that age of hate each other, yep. you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yep. Do you reckon that's room. lost a bit in today's game? Is that kind of like hate for other, other teams? Well, I don't know. When that I was rivalry? at South in first grade, it was, you always hated Roosters. It was always okay. a big game. Yep. And, um, Titans is probably with the Broncos, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. Obviously, they got us yesterday, but early in the year, we spoke about you know getting one over them and yeah. we beat them up at Suncorp. So, that's a big game always. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, there's obviously a couple of rivalries. Like Manly and Melbourne always seem to have a stink or yeah, something. Yeah, well, so. Broncos, it's Melbourne. It was Melbourne for us. Like, we yeah. hated Melbourne just because we just, we just thought they were so dirty, man. Like, they're wrestling and that. Especially 2006 to, like, you know, before they started cracking down on wrestle. Fuck, yeah. man. I used to walk off every time I played in Melbourne. My neck would be fucked, man, just because they would grapple the fuck yeah, out of you. Yeah, that's not without killing. That's when they first started their little run. Yeah, yeah, and they fucking, they were the first people doing wrestling, like, yeah. and then everyone followed. Um Okay, so yeah, so you you start playing, and so it wasn't until you were seventeen where you were like, "Fuck!" If I put my head down, you know, I might go all right. Yeah, I just remember, um, yes, yeah, looking at myself in the mirror. We're on a away trip up on the Goldie, and yeah. we're on the beers, you know. Talking about footy, I remember fucking nearly crying. I looked at myself in the mirror, and I was like, oh, "I want to play footy, like I want to do this." I can blind went back in and got back on the cans anyway. <laughs> but uh, I remember that specific moment. We're staying in the Gold Coast. So, yeah. um, uh, above the Coolangatta Hotel, we're staying yeah. there. And I remember just sitting there going. Yeah, I want to do this. Yeah, so yeah, okay. Sort of went from there. So was it just in a way trip with your mates? Or no, nah, uh, South used to take us away. He'd take us to State of Origin. Yep. Um, watch the, the first game at Origin, then you'd bus it down to Goldie and stay for the week. Oh fuck! It was a mad trip. Yeah, South Juniors had heaps of money back then. Well, they still do. On so. the pokies and that. Yeah, they'd be loading up with the pokies and money. But yeah, they used to look after their juniors really well. They still fucking do. Fucking hell, away trips like that. Yeah, so it was, um, good. But I remember that was a sort of the point where we went. Oh, I want to do something. Like this. Well, so was it the night after Origin or before Origin? Nah, after Origin. I was. One of the years was that when Hainsey scored that mad try down the sideline. Oh, you know, the, he grubbed it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was fucking so, But yeah, I remember being on the Terps and just going, I want to I do this. Yeah, so. Do you think that or 
origin had anything to do with that? Or was it just mm. more just the general... No, nah, I think we were just all sitting there talking shit on the drink. And yeah. I, know, something. I just remember that moment looking at myself on the beers nearly crying. Going, <laughs> I want to make first grade. You're a fucking loser. But, um, <laughs> hey, fuck it. Did yeah, something. It worked out. Did yeah, something. Yeah, fucking yeah, hell. So that's all right. I'll be a loser anyway. I'll work to play <laughs> first grade. Um, okay, so, so, so after that moment, was it kind of like, all right, like obviously you still lived your life, but you was more like, I've got to fucking focus here. Like put me mind to it a bit. Yeah, I just try and... Um, well, then I made... Uh, Sign up with 20s. I, yep. think I, was on like, I think I was on like three grand the first year yeah, yeah. under 20s, like just a little sign on fee. And um, <laughs> I just sort of, yeah, trained real hard that year and then um, got a, didn't play it around three. I think I played like three or four games at back row, edge back yep. row. And then they dropped me. And that's when John Lang said, um, uh, We want you to play hooker. Yep. And I said, nah, I'm not playing hooker. And this is the game that changed my whole career. So um, they made me 18th man. No one really knows this story. They made me 18th man. Round 13 or 12, we're playing Canberra. And um, James Seguiara, Chico, come down from... Because we played together at SG Ball. And he come yep. down from Townsville. And he was down for the weekend. So we, we got, got shit done. I got on the beers Friday night with him. <laughs> Saturday night, got on the beers again. Pulled up like like four in the morning. Fuck went up. to bed. Rocked up the train on the, on the Sunday. Forgot my boots. Was still like half pissed. <laughs> um, it was 18th man. And Brad Takarangi was in the side. And he, and he heard his, his shoulder wasn't going to go, Pete, you're playing. I was like... Fuck me. Mate, I'm fucking so shanked. I was like, so later that hour, I got home, put me joggers. I went for a road run <laughs> to sweat the grog out and just get the demons out of yeah, me. Yeah, and then yeah. um, come off the come off the bench. I, up, so I was playing and come off the bench. I lose an 18 nil against. We're losing 18 nil on a Monday night against Raiders. Oh my god! Well, yeah, Monday night, and I come on and not change the game, but we got it back to like 20. We're having a draw with them. Yeah. And after the game, Daniel Irvine was our um, training and our coach, and he's like. Blah, blah, but credit the pizza, you know, come back on, change the game. And I'm sitting there going, how the hell did I just do this? I was on the Terps all weekend, just got home at five in the morning, train, end up playing. And then the next week he started me at hooker. No and way. And I played hooker for the rest of the year. And that's what set me for life because I had a decent year that year. And the second year, I ended up captain in the 20s with David Kibble as our coach. And yep. we made it to the grand final. Fuck yeah. And that no. was the, that was literally the game. It was like the gods were looking yeah. down at me saying, well, oh, this is your chance. You know what I mean? And I didn't deserve it because I was on the beer. Yeah, like, yeah. I was 18th man. I'm like, I'm not going to move me good mates down for the weekend. I'm just going to get on the beer. And yeah, I won't play. Like I'm not going to play. And then Tackers go, yeah, my shoulder sore, <laughs> but it, it all worked out. But that was the game where I got put in hooker, and that's where I sort of got through. What do you reckon it was? Do you reckon it was because you had the demons in your head, like I got to do, I got to play well because I've done well, the wrong thing. I don't thing. think I did that anything well. I think it's because it was 18 new and I come on and end up being 20 all or something. So they probably thought he used the impact player. But I don't think I done nothing. So, <laughs> the impact player. Yeah, so I don't know what happened, but that was like a little turning point in my career because that's when it wasn't for John Lang. He's like, I want you. you're a hooker, mate. Yeah. Like, I was like, fuck, that's me dad. My dad played hooker, not me. Yeah, yeah. Play, played hooker all that year. And then second year, 20s, captain him and played 20s all year. We went to the grand final. And yep. then they, I signed a summer contract in What's first grade. So you only just signed oh, for the pre-season. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. they had Isaac Luke and Bo Falloon there. And Isaac Luke was in Kiwis. He had four nations. So he wasn't yep. back till February. Yep. So I just... That's the hardest I've ever trained my whole life. I've got something because it was only both Falloon and myself as the hookers. So every post session, it was me and him like against yeah. each other. Because yeah. if Isaac was there, it would have been that third hooker. Like, oh, you swap me now, PT. But because yeah. it was just me and both Falloon, I trained the hardest I've ever trained. So like, I've got one chance to make it. Yep. Summer contract. I'm on like 17 grand for four months. And then anyway, yep. played the trials, played the charity shield. And then Isaac come back, obviously, for that. And then they go, we'll sign you for March and April. So they signed me for five grand for two months. <laughs> and then the, the first game, <clears throat> um, Myself, Blake Joe were my best mates, and Josh Mansell, we were the three summer guys from yeah. the 20s. And all the boys had their um, Giorgio Armani suits rocking up the round one. And us three boys, because we were just summer players, yeah. we had the with the wear like the 20s kit, like the shirts and the polo, <laughs> shorts and the polo. And I said to um, Tony Henderson, the man, I said, I want an Armani suit, man. What's going on? He goes, Mate, you're only a summer contract. He goes, If you debut, I'll, I'll pick you, you know. And I was like, All oh, right, yeah. So we're sitting there, and um, it was round three, the boys played para, and um, myself and Kane Morgan, who played one game from we'll have a no names down in Sydney yeah. and someone got injured someone got knocked down we're like imagine we debuted together or something he's like yeah sweet we'd be mad like talking about it. so next week round four John Lane comes in and goes um, is the team this week you know you know, so and so fullback Nathan yeah. Merritt winger came Morgan one wing and looked at him he's like and then I was like, what? Whole way through. And then he goes, Nathan Peets as well, number 17. Fuck it. Like, yes. <laughs> and after, as soon as I finished that session, I walked straight into Tony Hanson, knocked on his door, said, I want my Georgia Armani suit. <laughs> so to his word, he took me into the city and yeah, yeah. I got measured up and that. So oh, okay. so what that, is this, 2012? 11, 2011. 2011. So then after that, so then as soon as I made my debut, they signed me for three years after that. Fuck but I was only on a summer contract for five grand. Yeah, and so, so and it was two months and you were in round three. So you would have been semi-close to the end of that contract. Too. Yeah, well, I debuted on the 1st of April. So it was the end of, pretty much the end of, yeah, signed from March and April. So 
and then yeah. they re-signed me. They signed me for the rest of that year, and another yeah, two years on top. Fuck so they ended up working out pretty well. That's crazy. That's like the, the fact that you debut with your mate and then on the pitch yeah, of your other mate. Crazy, so. Fucking hell, fuck me. Yeah, it's like. Was it, have you still got the Armani suit or not? Yeah, I just got <laughs> tailored the other day. It's great. Really? Nah, nah, they um. <laughs> You'll be like eighty years old still wearing. No, nah, nah, they um. There's a there's a bit of a dodgy suit. There. There's all these cream coloured khaki ones, and then like a green jacket, then. Two years later, they got the grouse, like charcoal grey Armani suit. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. So I went and got a tailor the other day. It's still open. It was Giorgio Armani. <laughs> I think I was supposed to give it back. I said, I'm taking it with me. Oh, 100%. Yeah, so. You're taking them. Oh, yeah. Fuck, Giorgio Armani. You want to be taking that? No way, we, we, I think we got, um, I don't know, what we got, Van Hoosen or some shit at the yeah. Broncos. Wasn't that good. So not Giorgio Armani. I'm keeping that. It's Russell Rabideau, Crowe's surely that's got to come to the cap. Surely. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> Russell Crowe's cap. Well. <laughs> um, okay, so fuck, I guess like. To, to, the 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 years where you went from hooker and then obviously into the first grade squad was it that so 2010 when you were playing in the under 20s and you got put into hooker yeah 2009 was that back end then 2010 yep. we yeah ca- captain, captain side we went to the grand final and Sean Johnson put on a clinic that day and yep. destroyed us in the grand final and then yeah 11 and 11 I just played lock all year yeah uh, 2011 my debut year played like 20 games and then 12 and 13 I was just like Lock hooker, yeah. Um, started a few games, started the first semi final in 12 and yep. stuff like that. Then, yeah, 13 was more of a you know, utility sort of play, and that's when I asked for release and go to Parramatta. Yeah, okay. So, um, those so those years would have been like weren't that smooth for you in the sense that, um, you know, you got put into hooker and then you just stayed hooker, you, you still stayed in fucking lock, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I didn't, yeah, 2014. So, I re signed in the in 2013, the January. With South for another two years, like good good money, I was happy with it. And then yep. by the July or June, I asked for a release. I had yep. a chat with Ricky Stewart, and he told me I'd be starting hooker and good opportunity for me. And I was like, well, I've played yep. over fifty games now, first grade. I reckon it's a good time to go. So I asked South for a release, and they said, yeah, go. Yeah. And I signed with Para, and that's when I had a full preseason at nine, and and went from there. Um. Okay, so take us back to your debut. Though you get named, call your dad, call your mum. Like, what was do you, what was your debut like for you? The debut week. Uh, yeah, it was up in the Central Coast, so yep. it's very special. Man. It's where I made my twenties debut and my first grade debut in oh, that yeah. field. So the, yep. my mum lives up there, so oh perfect. Um, yeah, it's a very special field to me, and we only played there a couple weeks ago against the Roosters. So yeah, I told mum and dad all the boys come up, all well, they yep. all drove up and was there. So <clears throat> um, I remember because I remember the game because I got put on about twenty five to go, and I was playing lock. And when you're at the first grade pace compared to twenties or in reserve size. grade pace is unbelievable. And, and uh, we were up and Manly scored in the corner of the siren after the siren and Cherry Evans had the kick from the sideline to go to Golden Point yep. and I was like praying and it's not because I didn't want to go to Golden Point because I was knackered like I physically couldn't have went another five minutes <laughs> yeah, yeah. and I was like please and he ended up missing so we got the win Yeah. and um, yeah got up but I was um, yeah, so you're just praying like I can't my body yeah I wasn't praying to no, miss it so we win I was like I couldn't care less I just <laughs> didn't want to play anymore because I was cooked so I think he made like 12 tackles had like two runs like, how was, much were you weighing then too what I was big man I was like compared to now I'm 91, 92 now I was yeah. like 98 then like, oh you massive yeah they called me Piggy Pete's because I was just a little chunky thing so Fuck, that's probably why I don't recognise you bro because you're fucking giant then I was yeah. as in like recognise that you were playing lock yeah instead of I was just a nugget like I was, well, it was just just thick and fat 98 <laughs> yeah like I'm 92 now and I'm bro. floating up, so I was 98 just, but I've seen photos of myself like I just like <laughs> <laughs> like I wish I had a good half decent rig then. Like I was pretty solid, pretty. Happy. Oh, really? Pretty big. Oh, I was happy with myself. Yeah. Now, now I've got a dad bod, two kids, dad bod now. But um, <laughs> yeah, funny. I don't know. I just think the wear and tear, rugby league. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I just can't keep up with that. I was heaps stronger than two in the gym. Like yep. when you're 20 years old and you're fresh, no injuries. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a breeze. It's a breeze, hundred percent. I used to go out in the field and muck around, and play warm up touch, and that with the boys. Oh, now yep. I'm out there doing me high knees and me <laughs> patellas killing me, and I'm just like, oh, yep. wow. Your so, shoulders sore. Yeah, I'm just like, like, oh, contact today. Yeah, back then I was like, let's do it. Yeah, hundred so. percent. And like you just. I remember when you used to rock up to a game and be like, oh, yeah, fuck. And whereas now you rock up, you're like, okay. All right, yeah, some days, sure. you, some days you warm up in the, in the game, your legs feel mad. Like yep. last week against Tigers at Leichhardt Oval, yep. I said to the trainer, my legs are feeling Mickey. Like, oh, I don't know what's going yeah, on yeah. today. And I, I played like pretty well and we won. It was just yep. like mad, nice day in Sydney. Yep. And then like some games you come out and your legs are just like, yeah. fuck. I remember we played the Bulldogs a couple weeks ago at Belmore. It was cold. Windy, yep. no crowd, and like the second set of the game, I had like jelly legs, and I was like, "Wow, what's like, happening?" Yeah. Sometimes I just tell myself, "Like, you're not going to have a good game. You're not going to have a mad game today because you haven't physically got it on you today." Yeah. But let's not have a bad game. You know, yeah. let's just do your job, tick away, tick all the boxes without having an outstanding game, and just yep. let's get through it. Yep. It might some people might go, "It's a shit attitude," but you know yourself when you played so many games and kids, and you know, going all the way up, you know when your body's on. Hundred percent. So when you're not, I just tell myself, "All right, fuck, you're not there today," but like, let's just. 
Let's just make your yep. tackles and have your runs and just get by. It's funny you say that because I was just talking to Jordan Kahu and Wayne Bennett said the same thing to him, like like because he said, "What what's holding you back to Jordan Kahu?" And Jordan Kahu said, "Oh, my body's holding me back a bit." And he said, "Just tick tick the boxes. This is the three things I want you to do. Do them well." Yeah. And it's hundred percent right. Being a first grader, it's not necessarily about that outstanding game. It's about the games where you're not feeling great, but you get the job done yeah. kind of thing. And I think that's what separates like regular first grader from you know maybe yeah. a reserve. My grader. old man told me he said like. You, you, when I was a kid and Garth Brennan used the same you know, sort of like line it's like you, you want your, your best game your worst game the gap real like small you don't want yep. your best game up here and your worst game down here because the, the gap's too big so you want to be sort of there and that's what the good players do and yep. I'm obviously still trying to work on that you know what I mean yeah. but yep. that's something that I'm trying to get better whereas my best game's there and just try and creep up yeah 100% I to- totally agree because it's like that's, that's one thing that you don't realise it's like so hard to stay at that level all year long, man. Like yeah, that level, tough. fucking tough game, especially in the middle there. Um, okay, so yeah, you make your debut, and then you, so that those next two years come in. Was it just kind of like a learning years for you, those few years, or what was it like for you? Oh, 2012, me and Madge had mad words. Like I, I, uh, Isaac was suspended, so I started round one against Roosters, played 80 minutes. Like, had a, I mean, that's when they beat us after the siren. That's that two, those two games we had that year. Yeah, Minicello scored after the bell, so we lost that. And then round two. I had a shocker. I missed a tackle of a 20 tap. The bloke went like 80 bees and scored. Then later in the game, Justin O'Neill hit him behind the ruck, went through and scored. And I was like, wow, I got hooked. Yep. And then Madge dropped me. And I didn't play till like round 14. It was like a 12 yep. week break. And I was fuck, I was like, he was like, well, arguing. I was like, I want out of here. Yeah. And then I sort of come to. So then I was like, fuck, I'll just go back to the reserve ground, try and carve up, like do yep. my best there. Yeah. Um, and then I ended up getting back in like round 14 or 15 and I played every game and we lost to the Bulldogs again in the grand final. That's when yep. um, Storm beat Bulldogs in 2012. It's yep. so when Reynolds done his hammy. So we we're, were right in the game there and he done his hammy in the 25th yep. minute. And then, so yeah, that's probably the, cl- that's the closest I've ever been to a grand final. I was one win away, like, yep. you know what I mean? But um, yeah, and that was all right. Finished on a good note there. And then 13, that was when I started yeah, fighting demons a bit there because not getting consistent minutes. And yep. one week I'd play 80 minutes, the next week I'd play 20, then I'd play 10, then I'd play 50, then I'd yep. it was just all over shop. And I was like, I think I'm not too, like being cocky, I was like, I just think I'm too good to be playing these kind of yeah, minutes. So, yeah, yeah. And I was re signed for two years, yeah, in the January. And I said to Imagine, I want to go to Para. Yep. So they, they gave me a release, and that's when I signed Para. And so what do you think? the difference like what do you think Madge wanted and what do you think you you wanted and where you weren't meeting do you reckon oh, well, it's, it's, Isaac was the hooker there and then they had, yep. obviously I wasn't quite big enough then at that, at, at that stage of my career to be playing like a heavy lock you know what I mean yeah, so it was yep. more the utility role yep. where I could you know there's some games where Ben Teo was in origin I started at right back row and left back row yep um, I was just one of those fix fix it guys, and then they re- when I re-signed in two years, I was like I don't really want to do this anymore. Like, yeah, yeah. I've got my fifty first grade games. I've I've learnt, you know, under some good coaches. I think it's probably time to go. Yep. So I asked for a release, and they gave it to me. Yeah, I get, and it, you look back on it now, and you're like, you know what, you could have ended up just as a utility if you didn't. I, make mean, that I think decision. that was the, even though I had a, a couple, you know, serious injuries at Parramatta, it was probably the best decision in my in my life. That one, like, yep. besides having me kids and stuff like that, because that was sort of where. It, you know, if I like I said, I stayed at South, I might have just been stuck, you know, behind Isaac and whatever, having a yep. good, you know, however it worked out, or that was where it sort of made a name for myself without, yeah, make a name for myself. Yeah, yeah. That's where I sort of made the Nathan Pete's name by yeah. being a starting number nine instead yeah, of just 100%. being in the background somewhere else. Yeah, no, nah, definitely, definitely. And like, there, there's such like, at the time, you might not know how momentous that decision is, but fuck, like, if you, you could have done the easy route, the easy route was like just stay. Yeah. But fuck, man, utilities get paid fucking nothing compared to like, yeah. A, starting hooker for one and for two like as you said like fuck utilities are easily replaced if there is a gun that comes in yeah exactly do you know what I mean like yeah. a younger utility that might be a bit well bigger. Luke here ended up coming in and pushed me to reserve grade yeah because he come through and Madge goes we, after like round 14 he's like mate I'm not going to play this way he's like why we've, we've won like 11 out of 14 he's like yeah, yeah we're just going to go with the four, four front row rotation I was like yeah. fuck fuck yeah. you <laughs> yeah. and then and then he Went that, then the two games later, he put Kiri, and then he played the rest of the year. And then, yep. and then I left, and they won the comp the next year. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy, but um, I, I honestly reckon I might have been in the 17. Yeah, but no, I don't know. Yeah, and yeah. Isaac ended up not playing anyway, but happy to play. But yep. everything happens for a reason. I didn't regret it one bit. I was just like, yeah, yeah you leave a club and they win the grand final next year. Like, oh, uh, but, yeah, um, I know what you mean. Yeah, I know it's probably you mean. the best decision I've made in my career. Yeah. And um, so you go to Para, and so, you know, walk us through that. Like, what was it like going there? You're at a new club, you know, you're, you're established essentially as a first grader, you know, 50 games. You know what was that like for you the whole transition yeah it was weird because you signed in the facilities weren't real good like training at like a local f- you know footy field like yep. the gear was rubbish and i was like Fuck, what is this place you know what yeah, I mean? like yeah. the south had pretty good back yep. then they had the good that was probably the best facilities in the comp yeah um and i was like wow what is this joint and then um 
yeah, didn't didn't know anyone from Barra. So I, I uh, met, I knew, I said hello to Normie because he was Ben Teo's mate. So that was yeah. pretty much, and I knew Chris Sando because I played with him at South. But yep. and Hainsey because you know, our old man's grew up together going to school. But that's literally yep. all I knew. And I didn't really know him all that well besides Chrissy. Yeah. So yeah, it was a it was a different one. It took me a little bit longer to settle in there because I didn't know him from the you know in CS I come through the ranks with the twenties kids yep. like me Reynolds and blokes like that. So I knew my I had my little crew as yep. I didn't really know anyone. So I used to just train and just go home because like, I live in the eastern suburbs still. So it's a lot. I was like, fuck, if I leave now, I can get home before the traffic. So yep. I was just gunning home. So it bit off me the first year because I was all about myself. Yeah, yeah. And after that, I sort of realised that I was yeah, the same with the Warriors, man. Yeah, you got to yeah. be a team player. You yep. know what I mean? And then. Once I settled down and went, oh, this is where I'm playing and, and, and gave the boys a lot of time, and then that's when they sort of, oh, here he is, you yeah. know, because I think at the start they thought it was a bit of a loser, or well, not a loser, but a bit of a derrick because I was just take off home because I was like, fuck, if I get stuck at training, it's going to take me an hour and a half to get home yeah, Vicky yeah. Road, so I was just gap at home. And you're still like young as well, you're just kind of thinking about yourself. Yeah, and like, I, was, yeah. yeah I didn't really know anyone, so I was like, and then once I got settled in and, and started like getting to know everyone and, and yeah, just that's when I got probably that, that year sort of matured me a little bit, I think. Yeah, no, it's it's funny because like the same thing happened with me at the Warriors and, and when I was doing it, I didn't realise it enough, but I look back on it now, I'm like, you're being so selfish. Like the boys yeah. were trying to fucking get you a part of it, but you just go home, come, yeah. like, come to training and you, yeah, I'll fucking regret that first, that year at yeah. the Warriors. But um, so that, so that first year, it's kind of like a growing year for you. And then so that's, you, you were playing nine though, playing first grade? Yeah, that's, like, I only played 10 games before I'd done my ACL. Yep. But that was the best 10 games I played in first grade, like, probably to this day. Like, oh, really? Yeah, it's probably the best year I've, I've ever had. Like, yep. even though I only played 10 games, but I just, just had, like, a new lease of life and played well. And that's when they started talking about origin and that. Like, and yep. I was like, why don't you just start playing number nine? Like, <laughs> but yep. um, that was honestly the best year of footy I've sort yep. of had. And that's what, and then ever since then, I, I've played decent footy, I think, at, at times, but I don't think I've ever got back to that level. Like, yep. um, I don't know why. I just, like, you yeah, I was saying like, to you but before off camera my first game of power I remember against Warriors didn't have one bit of strapping yeah. not, 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 my body was not t- was just footy socks yep. boots straight on let's go let's jersey on now I'm like I'm the mummy like I'm covered like, <laughs> Petra, so, seven yeah, seven, like. yeah pretty much like, <laughs> I'm, literally I remember that was the difference like playing with no fear and being a young kid like your first first year as a starter I just want to make the most of it and I think I did that and then I hurt my knee obviously and then yeah sort of went what was the um, the knee injury like for you because that would have been your first big injury big injury yeah, I remember just, yeah, hurt my knee and then they said I had a partial tear and I played for like six weeks with it. And then, um, then You're when a maniac. I, yeah, I had like, a, I hurt my knee. And I got knocked out against Tiger. I tried to hit, um, oh, one, one of the Islander fellas in Tiger. I tried to shoot a line and whack him and I got rattled and I went back on side and as I turned around, um, what's his name? Plays for Sharks. Um, come from the Tigers. Big front row, the Islander front row. Um. Not tongue a teasy, no, he wasn't there. Um, he wears a head strap. Some of, uh, I don't know. Can't remember. Anyway, he, uh, I can't remember his name. And he come, he come at me the next one. He seen me rattle, so I tried to hit him, and then I've like landed in my knee and buckled, and I've got up. My knee is just like excruciating, like killing yep. me. And I was like, wow. Then after like forty seconds, I just went away. Yeah. Because my head must have just been still like days. Yeah. So I played the game, finished it off, was fine. Like no, like all good. Woke up the next day, and my knee was like, wow, what is that? So you done your ACL and kept playing. Yeah, well, that, so when I went for scans, it was only like a partial tear. And then I'm like, I'm not, like, I'm still playing. So I strapped it up and then played for like six weeks and it was all good. And then just went for a kick chase against Penrith and then just put my foot down and went bang. And I laid in the ground for like five minutes. I was like, wow. And I got up and I played the rest of the half. So I played like the last 10 minutes of the half time. Strapped up at half time, come out for the first like 15 minutes of the second half and we we're getting beat like 28 nil. And when, on, on the kickoff, I remember I just couldn't run. My knee was aching. And I was like, yep. fuck, what am I doing? Like, 28 yeah. nil, my knee's killing me. Yep. So I come off and, um, yeah, I was like, oh, I don't know what it is. I drove home, woke up the next day. My partner, Jay, we went to, she drove me to um, get a scan. And then on the yep. way home, the physio rang me. And then that's when she told me, you've done your ACL. And I was just started bawling my eyes out. And Jay had to pull <laughs> over. It was the first serious injury I've ever had. Yeah, yeah. And ACL is that scary injury. You yeah. Know? You can do your shoulder, yeah, most anything, know, ACL. It's just that one. So I remember just bawling my eyes out, like just rattled. So then I, um, yeah, I was like, fuck. So then I rehab, uh, done a couple of weeks of that, then had the ACL surgery, and then six weeks later I had a shoulder reco yeah. because my shoulder was a bit bung, so yeah. I fixed them both up. So that was probably the hardest time of my life because I've yeah. got, I probably regret doing the shoulder because then it, even though my knee, re, like knee's been fine, rehab it was just like tough time because you can't do weights or runs. So yeah, like, yeah. It's just like shit. I was fat, sloppy mess, skinny fat. Like I was just depressed as depressed as yeah. like just on the painkillers all the time. Like yeah. just sort of yeah. And then I end up yeah. It was just a long, long year that year. Yeah. That being, so. so, so do you ever feel like I mean, do you ever feel like fuck? Maybe like 
you, obviously your toughness is something that is a good part of your game. But that toughness, like if you had a partial tear, if you had to just maybe pump the brakes a bit, you might have been able to get away with eight weeks away instead of doing your full, do you know what I mean? Yeah, looking back, yeah, 100%. There's heaps of things I like, could have done like that. Like, yeah, I, 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 do, I do regret a lot of things. I don't regret a lot of things in life. I just regret a couple of things I've done in footy. Yeah, yeah. Um, just a couple of things that like, so then the next year, played the first 14 games of 15, was like getting back in it, feeling pretty good. Yeah. And then and I ended up figuring out who it was. And you know that Nelson stuff, like he plays for Melbourne, the big front row. Giant, yeah. It was his second game of first grade and I'm playing half, I got poked in the eye, right? <laughs> Early in the game playing hooker. And I've been poked in the eye and I can't see. So I've come off, my eye is cooked. Like I physically, I ended up tearing my retina in my eye. Fucking and I didn't hell. notice at the time and I'm in the sheds and I promise you at half time, a case of Pritchard then got, Concussed. Yeah. So he had a HIA, and Brad Arthur goes, "Mate, I need you for ten minutes in the second half. You play ten minutes. He's HIA times on. He comes back on, and Good. you're off." I said, "Yeah, sweet." I remember looking at my eye and I looked at myself, and I remember saying, "Like you fucking don't go back on. Like you're yeah. cooked. Yeah. You cannot see." And I was like, "Nah, sweet." So I go back on the field, and I remember saying to Normie, "He used to play left edge. He was our left half." Yeah. I remember saying, "Normie, put your hand out when you want the ball, like out front, so I can see you, because I can't see you quite properly." Like, so I'm passing, and after ten minutes, Kays come back on as a coach does. Oh, Pete's all right. Left, leave him on. He's all right. So then they put me to halfback. Oh my god. Because Kays has come back on, so I'm playing halfback, and I'm like. As me, I see this, <laughs> this big giant come on. I go, who's this bloke? I want to try and whack him. <laughs> I've come out of halfback, shot him out, and he's stepped. And I've twisted and I've, my knees buckled. I felt a oh, pop. Fuck me. I've come off. And then I thought of my ACL again. It was a, this is the only thing I was sort of regret in rugby league is that doing, trying to shot someone from halfback when my eye was it's cooked. Because I ended up, having, I ended, up getting, ended up having laser surgery on my eye because I tore my retina. So I should have stayed off. But yeah. this knee now, it's fine. Like I play first grade training, but yeah. like, it's always a, it's like going to be a thing that's with me for the rest of my year, uh, life because once you do a, like a cartilage damage in your knee. So what, what, what did it end up being? Medial or? Uh, like a lateral condyle thing. Okay. And I've had stem cell injection. And like, so I'm, I'm fine playing, but it's just the one thing that I have to rehab all the time and yep. stay on top of. And it's okay. the one decision in footy where I just go, oh my God, if I just stayed, stayed off. off in yep. the, I knew I was cooked. I ended up having four weeks off because of the eye anyway. Cause I, so even if I didn't go back on, I would have to have four weeks off getting it fixed. Like once you need to settle down and like stick back down. Fuck it all, bro. So I was just like, well, it was just one of those things. And then the year later in 16, I, Brad Arthur's been massive on like shooting out from marker and chopping blokes low. Yeah. And I see Tom Lolo there. I'm like, I'm going to get him. So oh I'd shoot God. out his knee. That bloke is the scariest bloke in the world to tackle because he's so powerful. Yeah. His knee just goes straight into my arm and my elbow pops out the back. And I'm just like, wow. And, then, and I'm like, I'm not doing those tackles yeah, anymore. Like, that. And that's, that was a sort of game. That's where it sort of changed. And I was like, you know what? And that's yeah. Smart, after yeah. that, I, that's when I signed. I was sixteen. I ended up going to Titans, and from that point onwards, I haven't really like been a radical out anymore because yeah, I sort yeah. of realised that it's just not worth it. Like yeah. I can still play aggressive style and and hunt from marker and do all that kick pressure stuff and play an aggressive style, but um, I'm not on the kickoff side trying to whack people off the yeah. kickoffs anymore. I'm on the other side. Like I got to. It's not about dogging it. It's just about being a bit smarter. And also, like you can be aggressive and like. Um, technically really good and chop blokes without fucking trying to drive them back yeah, 10 metres you know what, what I mean? mean so I think I've just figured out you figure that out as you get older how to get around the park well, I figured that out fucking when I was two years old <laughs> yeah. so there's two that, that, that knee thing was the biggest thing I've ever regretted in my so life so what do you, what do you th like you know like for example most blokes they have that decision and they're like you know what self preservation like fuck like I'm not gonna I'm not going back my eyes fucked sorry sorry, coach like I love the boys I love the team I believe he's but I'm fucked what what do you think what do you think it is in your life that makes you go no nah, I'm gonna do this for the boys? I don't, I don't even know. I just remember saying I'm cooked here. Don't go back on. And I went back on and I was like, <clears throat> yeah, I just I don't know. I just just silly. So just fucking just a maniac. Just, yeah, I just just silly. Like when you're young and and like, I, I know I'm not old old, but when you're 23, you feel indestructible kind of thing. Yeah, and you you know playing footy at, at that level with a new team and stuff like that. Yep. You want to do it, you know what I mean? So. It's not saying I wouldn't do something like that for the boys again. It's just yeah. more being a bit wiser and a bit older and, and yeah. knowing knowing your limits and knowing your body. And you know, I think someone told me, you know your body better than anyone. And yeah. that's so true, you know what I mean? I think I've been a bit wiser. Even this year I had a rib cartilage and I want to come back and gasp at me. I said, mate, just if you give it one more week, there won't be any hassles. Like yeah, it'll be yeah. fine. It was, yeah. And I said, mate, for the first time in my career, I'm going to listen to you. Yeah, you know? And yeah. I have that, and I end up having that extra week off and it feels mad, you know what yeah. I mean? Compared, like, I'm not saying I might have done it again, but yeah. I was real in the warm up. I warmed up with the boys that game and I was like, ooh. And I was like, yeah. that extra week just gave me that much more confidence. So yeah. it comes down to a point where you sort of know your body a bit more. And also, like, it's like that temporary of like, all right, I could go out and play here, but then I might be out for three weeks. Is that more damage to the team than me being out just yeah, for another week? It's, it's hard. 
to do that because you don't know. Yeah, in your, as a footy player, you want to be back as soon as 100%, you can. Hundred percent. Yeah. I've seen that many blokes where they have, they've been out for six weeks and they have one, they have buys coming up. Yeah. And if you just have that extra week off, then you have the buys. You're ready to go. But the blokes have pushed themselves for that, and they end up redoing it or 100%. something. But I've done that before too. Like you want to yeah. be there for the boys. Yeah. So that's the thing about you as a footy player, you're competitive. So. Yeah. It's like a it's a double edged sword. You know that's what makes you. Uh, Good, good, good footy player, yeah. you know, or a professional athlete, or really good. It's like in business or whatever. You're really good at what you do because you're an extremist in certain things. Yeah. But it's also that thing that fucking pushes you over the line. You do stupid yeah, shit because you fucking. So I, f- I figured out the, the evenness of it now, and um, much more happy. So yeah, the first one, you, the first one you did, you played six weeks with a fucking partial ACL tear, and then played the rest of the game, and then you did your eye. <laughs> Didn't you break your neck? Yeah, I broke my neck. <laughs> when was that? Tell us about that story. Nah, we will play in the Roosters. Um, <laughs> What was it 2015 like around 23 or something yeah and um uh Takeaho, the, f- the front row lock for Roosters he's you a like machine. going for the smaller guys <laughs> yeah he's, he's a machine he's a big fella and he um I was at I think I was an A or B defender and he was coming and he's got like a bit of footwork and he charged in the line he sort of I think he came at the line and bounced off his left instead of hitting him with my right shoulder I put my head in the wrong way and he's hit me there Ugh. And I just felt a mad burner down my back, like the whole way down my yeah. back. And I was like, oh, wow. And the whole game, I ended up playing like the rest. So I was like three minutes in the first half, second half. So I played the rest of the half with it. And then um, just after the game, I was just like just hurt. And I was like getting the physio to treat my back on the shares. Yeah. And she just gave me some painkillers. And I was like, sweet. So I took, took them, um, went to bed, like just had a couple of them and went to bed. Wake up the next day and we had a recovery. And I'd be, I remember like driving down Vicky Road and I'd be driving and every like 20 seconds, like, it, like my muscles must be in spasm because yep. my neck was like obviously fractured. So Fucking my up. back thing, and I'd have to pull over, like yep. literally pull over That's and I'd like wait for it to go. And I'm like, oh, and then yep. I get back on the road and I drive again and then it, bang, it come back and I have to pull over. Like my, it was cooked. I got the physio and they just put like a hot, um, balloon th- what are they called the hot water things yeah. let it cool like thinking it was just like a muscular thing <laughs> that'll help me thanks doc yeah she, like, she looked after me <laughs> yeah, I know, she I sent saying. me home and then yeah. I was at home and like got a phone call like 7.30 like nah, we we're a bit worried about you like I'm going to send you for MRI oh, so they sent me for MRI straight yeah. after training sorry and they yeah. said you've got two muscle tears in your neck or something so how will be sweet this week and they're yeah. like oh we don't know you know what I mean I was like oh. so I got home and about 8 o'clock she rang me she's like I've just had a chat with the doctor. Like, we're just going to send you for a CT scan just in case. She goes, how is it? I said, the pain's horrendous. Like, yeah. I don't know what's going on. Like, yeah. this is the worst thing. I remember going for lunch and like, I was the same thing. I was like, oh, I couldn't even move. Yeah. So she sent me for to the hospital, Westmead, to get a, um, uh, what's it called, a CT scan. And yeah. then they had a CT and they come in and go, mate, put this on. I said, I'm not fucking wearing that. <laughs> like a neck brace. Yeah, goes, mate, yeah. you've got a fractured neck. <laughs> like, what do you mean? They go, you fractured your C6. Like, there's a crack in your neck and it's like, Right near your spinal thing, like you're fractured yeah, your neck. And so like, close to fucking. What? So they put this on. I'm like sitting there, like laughing with it, <laughs> taking photos. Like, and then <laughs> I got home, and then yeah, end up, so I ended up going to see three neck guys, and they said one guy said you'll never play footy again. So next, <laughs> and then the next guy's you off Who your cares head. about your medical yeah, degree? And then went to one guy, and he goes, yeah, you got to wear a wear a brace for six weeks. Um, no weights for four months. Oh, you start fuck. training after six months. I was like, no way. And I rang Ben Ross because yep. I was with him at Seas and yep. he goes, mate, go to Dr. Parkinson at, um, oh, where is it? Uh, St. Vincent's in yeah. the city there. Yeah. So yeah, sweet. So went to him. He goes, mate, we'll take, you know, bone, we'll cut, like, cut your hip. We'll take bone out of there. We'll take the disc out, put it in, put a cage over it, screw it in and then your fracture will naturally heal and then you disc, you know, so yeah, sweet. And he goes, I go, what at the brace and weights? He goes, no, nah, no brace. You'll be able to do weights, weights after six weeks. I was like, you're the man, let's go. What? So yeah, then the sur- I had surgery and like it was, I got like a big solid scar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but he was the man, the doctor. So Parkinson. what, they went through the front? Yeah, so they go, so they cut your throat. They cut, the, cut, I've got a scar here. They cut through your hip, take a piece of bone out and they cut through the front and then they get like these tongs and they push all your thing to the side, all your muscles and throat things. What? And they just go straight into your bone. Because if they go through the back, you've got to cut through too much muscle. So they just use these prompt like 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 um, what are they called? Fucking tongs. Yeah. And they open it all up and they just get straight through, take the disc out, put the new one in, drill the cage on, and the fractures there. What so f- like through and around like? Yeah, straight. Well, pretty much. Yeah, straight through. Yeah. And then they just, just say, oh, I remember those first few days in the hospital was the worst pain, like <sighs> horrendous pain. But then after that, it sort of come good. And after like six weeks, I was doing weights, and then yeah, I was back in it from day one preseason. I was doing weights straight into it. Fuck me, dude. That's yeah, fucking so crazy, bro. That's crazy. That's like, and so it was what, like when you're in, said it was like painful and that in the hospital. So when I, I broke six ribs and my lung collapsed and I snapped one of them and I kept pressing like the thing and the chick comes in and goes, Look, just so you know, 
you're not getting any more morphine it's so how come you didn't get any more morphine like what no it was just because it was just so painful i remember uh, even my shoulder rico uh last off season they had the morphine button and you can only press every five minutes yeah, exactly yeah so yeah. i'd be with that off my head with that much pain i'd sit there and i'd press it and i'd be like half that off my gut <laughs> and i'd just watch it to uh, as soon as it went green again i went bang it was the best five minutes of my life yeah. i'd just sit there and watch it and just press it again so, yeah, yeah. um yeah the neck was sweet but like for the amount of injuries i've had and the most serious thing you'll i'll ever do on a footy field yeah like it come really good. I just had the Hannibal yeah, Lecter bro. thing on now. I do my neck like the Floyd Mayweather, Mike yeah, Tyson yeah. weights. Yeah. And I just strengthen on that. And um, that gets to the back muscles like pretty strong to you know help you even for impact in that. And just, oh yeah. my God, bro. That's fucking crazy. Yeah. Like, imagine yourself like, lying on a table open. Yeah, and I was, it's pretty like my missus, I reckon I've seen her cry maybe three or four times. I've probably made her cry those times. <laughs> like she's, she's um i'm a very emotional person you know what i mean yep. like she's not and i remember talking to my mum because you wake up in icu yeah like you're in oh, intensive, intensive care, care after you wake up yep. like catheter in like full yep. and i remember her she i didn't even remember her coming in but she ended up ringing my mum and she was like my mum was like saying she was bawling her eyes out because like yep. when you walk in you're like in icu like yeah, intensive like, care like, serious, tubes man. come out of yeah like it's pretty hectic and yep. for her to get emotional like she, she's pretty cruisy you know what i mean yep. i knew it would have been pretty bad 100 so but um Fucking yeah touch wood it's all good now Okay, so Paramount Eels, um, you know, you, you, you like I know you said you didn't get back to those ten games, but you still play good footy there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you're still in the in the mix for Origin and everything like that. Like, so those next few years, what was that like for you? And then obviously the decision to leave it was yeah, it's just frustrating. Better. I think I worked out like um, two two and a half years there. So like, you play twenty four. We didn't make the final, so twenty four games, twenty four games. That's yep. forty eight, um, and then a, a, another possible. I think I played the first, you know, 10 rounds out of the next year. So out of 58 games, I think I played like 35. Wow. And I think I was suspended for one for a fight I had like years ago. I got suspended from the NRL. Yeah. So, you know, I missed, you know, 22 games. Or one game, sorry, I missed when I was first signed with the Titans. Yeah. So I missed 21 games in two and a half years from injury, you know what I mean? So yeah. even though I played half good footy, I made a name for myself. It was pretty frustrating at times. Yeah. And that's where I learned the lesson of not doing your stupid shit. Yeah. And I think that's benefited me now because I've been at, this, at the end of this season with the Titans I'll, I'll be the exact same time period because it yep. would have been half the year the Titans and then two full seasons Okay, and if, you know, if I potentially play the rest of the year I would have played a lot more games than I did yep. at Paramount just so, by being a bit smarter about it yeah so it was a tough transition obviously I didn't want to leave Paramount I was very upset yep. about that so walk very, us through the whole I mean I know you've spoken about it before and it's like an interesting thing from like it's your life so it's not interesting for you but it's interesting yeah. from the outside in um, just walk us through the whole process you know yeah so um we played City. I made City camp. So it was myself and Gutho. And we were obviously close to Darcy Lassie. We was at Manly. Yep. And then the salary cap stuff was going on. So we said to Freddie, I said, we've got to go on a Parramatta train tomorrow because then I was coming and talk to us. And he goes, yeah, sweet. So we went in there. And that's when Todd Greenberg got up and goes, yeah, you've been taking all your points off. Yeah. And you, did you have any idea before this? No, nah, no idea. And it was like, wow. Like I was rattled. Like after, yep. you bust your ass so hard. And we started the year pretty well. Like, yeah. We'll, I won 12 points. It was only City Country time. So we we'll, were we'll sitting pretty well. I think, yeah. you know, going pretty good. Yeah. And I was, uh, yeah, pretty rattled. I was like, wow. So we were back training and then I sort of didn't want to be there after that, but ended up playing that week. Sorry, ended up playing that week. And then um, Brad messaged me on the Sunday night saying, yeah, good game. You know, you and Gutho see you tomorrow. Come in for massage in the morning and I seen something in an article like, with my name. I was like, what the fuck is that going on there? Yeah. Didn't think anything of it. And then Monday night I got the phone call. And it was from um, my manager, Sam. He's like, told me the whole situation. Like, they're over the cat. Obviously, you know, they lost points. They need to get under points. You're the only bloke on enough money. There was myself and Corey Norman. He goes, you two are the only blokes on enough money to get them under the cap this year who are off contract next year. Yeah. Because if you want to get rid of someone who's signed for the next three years, you've got to pay them out. Yeah, yeah. So me and Norman, the only two that fit the bill, we're on enough money to get them under the cap. Yeah. But when, and I was like, fuck. And they go, they've asked you, like, if it's you. And I said, like, why? And they're like, well, Norman's a 5'8". Yeah. And they've got you, Kayser, Isaac the Goy, like they can sign them like, for yep. less and you know what I mean blah, blah, blah. and he's like you don't have to go but like it's, yep. you're better off because it, the fact is they've got no money for you next year yep. I was like what do you mean he goes well I said no nah, I'm staying he goes mate let's just go like to Gold Coast Titans offered you three years but we'll just sign 18 months I was like no well, we might as well sign four years then he goes or something like that. he goes no 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 get, sign you for 18 months when the salary cap goes off just get you up there I was like I'm not going yep. he goes mate we need you to go if you stay with Para you they've got no money next year and you're going to be on peanuts next year I was like no yep. way I'm not going yep. I remember talking to him and he's like mate like, don't feel pressure to go on and get us under the cap Like, if you stay we'll play for no points Like, we're happy for you to stay is that is that what the coach said? That's or? what Timmy said to me, man. Like, they're talking to the boys. They're like, don't like. Oh, Timmy Manor yeah, said he's to like, your manager. Yeah, you stay, man. Like, we're fine with that. Like, we'll play for no points. Like, we yep. don't want you to go. Yeah. And but what spooked me was that they had no money for next year. Like, yep. they literally had nothing. I was like, fuck. 
far out. So I went to train on the Tuesday. Train on the Tuesday as if I was playing against South that Friday. Like yep. Brad put me in starting hooker. Like, yep, named And Jerry. then um, that Tuesday night, I was like, well, they owe me money in third party. So I'm not going until they pay me. Yeah. And Sam's like, mate, let's just go. I was like, no way. Like, yep. they've been stuffing me around these third parties and all yep. that stuff. Like, I need my, I want my full pay before I go because yep. they wanted me just to go scot free. And I was like, nah, no, I'm not nah. this. No yep. way in the world. He's like, yep. mate. I was like, nah. I tell them if I don't get some money, I'm not going. Yeah. So they end up. Not the salary cap drama it was like actually legit third parties. Yeah, yeah. So I got got paid off. Ended up getting my money that I was signed off in the third parties. And I all approved it because they were the last yep. thing. And then we signed with our Titans. Yeah. So. So fuck. And then the thing that was the thing that got me the most. I'm happy up here now. I don't regret my decision. But the whole reason I left was because they had no money for next year. So I was like, well, there's no point staying. Then Kieran Foran left like six weeks later, later and cleared up like a million dollars in the cap. Oh they end up signing like 10 players the next year. So I would have been able to stay and fuck. But as everything's worked out well yeah. here, so I'm quite happy. But with still, you'd have been like, at the time, you're like... At the time when he left, I was like, is he, is he kidding? Like, I know he left for personal reasons. Yeah, but I was yeah. like, is he kidding? Like, <laughs> that's a million dollars right there. Like, that's me re-signed like that. You know what I mean? Like, Brad would have re-signed me straight away. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, no way. That's just meant to be. But yeah. also, I, I don't regret my decision at all. I love it up here. And what's crazy is like you were like I want to stay no matter what blah 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 and then like obviously he chose to leave you know and it's like yeah, it's two know. complete like, opposites I of like, so pretty filthy it cut me pretty deep to be honest like yes yeah. um, still still a spot in my heart or not my heart it's still a spot in me that's still pissed off about it but yeah, yeah. life goes on and no one really cares yeah. anymore so well that's the thing like even with stuff that's happened with me like you know I, I'm, I, I'm over it but I'm also not like I'm also yeah, like that was fuck it. like yeah. that was fuck what happened and I don't really appreciate it but at the same time I'm like like fuck, yeah, look at that's it. life. So yeah. I don't really, um, not too fussed about it. Yeah, the fucking hell, that's great. So I mean, what is also funny is that if you had have just listened to your manager and been like, "All right, we're out," you wouldn't have got any of your third parties in that. And I know, like, yeah, I'm well, doing you a favor by leaving. You weren't even. Yeah, he was money. like, "Mate, like, come on, let's go. We got us because Titans are looking at another hook at the time." Yep. Um, they're about to sign him. They're like, but they'll, they'll, they want you. Like, you know, and I was yep. like, far out. And he's like, I'm not going to get my at least my third parties. And they're like, yep. so the NRL all end up coming back and saying, yeah, all right, we approve this amount. Yeah, you know, yep. blah blah. So I end up getting paid, but I end up being not a pay like a paid. Like, like the next year, I, I like say I was to come off contract, which I was, and then re-sign power. I would have got more the next year. Yeah. So I end up signing with Titans for what I was on that year at the para for the oh, next year. Okay, so it yeah. wasn't a pay cut, it was just the same amount of money. But yeah, or well, technically it was because you always usually progress, especially as you Yeah, but, it, but then I end, it doesn't really matter because yeah. they end up working out well anyway and how I've like, come yeah. before. So it wasn't that big a deal. The money's not everything. It was more just like, I just want to make sure I got what para owed me before I left because yep. like, I'm not leaving then they get off scot-free. Yeah, yeah, and you're so, the one doing them a favour. Yeah, the other so way around. It, was, um, it was a bit of a tough time there. But um, So what was that like? You know, so we talk about the footy side, we talk about you. So, what was that like with your family, though? Like, you're talking to your family, like, they want me to leave, and you got the pressure of, like, you know, you're a provider for your family as yeah, well. Yeah, my partner was mass. She was like, let's go, like, let's, you got to take it. Like, she was the one drumming into me because I was like, no, I'm staying. Like, yeah. fuck, this, I'm staying. Yeah. And she's like, no, let's just do it. Like, let's just go. Like, yeah. it's, it's, you know, don't be stupid. Think about the future. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, yeah, right, yeah. Fuck, so like that makes it easier. Yeah, and once they start, like, she wasn't too fussed about it. It was a hard move for her because she's really family orientated and yep. I'm not so much. Like, I am with my immediate family. Yep. I am with my immediate family, but not, she's got a you know, much broader family and much yep. bigger family. So it's hard. it was a lot harder for her. Yeah. But when she said, let's do it, I was like, all oh, right, yeah, we'll do it then. Yeah. Because so. she, she, I mean, she could have rightfully so been like, I don't want to move anywhere. Like, yeah, exactly. Had, There's plenty of people plan. out there who yeah. would have done that. And you can't really hold it against them because, yeah, that's what See. they're comfy with, I guess. Yeah. So. 100%. But um, yeah, it was, a, it was a tough decision, but. Um, in the end, it worked out pretty well. So you come to the Titans, um, and then so that would have been what 2015, 16, 16, yeah. 16. halfway through around 11, I got to be around 10. So 2016, and then you. So was it 2016 that you played for New South Wales or 17? No, nah, last year 17. 17. Yeah. Okay, so 2016 you come up. What was that whole like like that whole process like for you as in footy wise? It was weird because I got up here and um, like I knew. Greg Bird, I knew like Eddie Pettiborn, like yep. you know, I knew a few of the boys, so I was was pretty comfy. But I got up here and we trained at Burley Bears uh, facilities, and I've gone from South where they had grouse facilities, the Parramatta where they'd done up their facility. The first year was like wow, and then they <laughs> had a mad facilities after that, like yep. wrestle mats, room, like yep. cardio room, weights, like it was good setup, good too, like brand new fields. Yeah, when the um, park, times yeah. we trained at Pizzy Park, like yep. it's great facilities for a, a reserve grade side, so like but, a Q Cup yeah. team, but. First grade, they, they, in Burley, like, if you know Pizzy Park, halfway through the year, there's that many games played on it. It's like shit. a cow paddock. Yeah. I was like, what is this year? And we yeah. went to the gym and they had like, they're just old school gym. Like, good, like I said, good gym for A grade and, and reserve, yeah, like Q Cup team. Like professionals. But no, like, yeah, no, like, rehab stuff. Like, yeah. no, it was just like ghetto gym in there. And I was like, yeah. what is this place? And then, but the thing that made me, like, fit in so well and I love it is because 
all the boys there, it wasn't a team of superstars. The Titans yeah, are still not yeah, like, yeah. Just, we're just a team of hard workers. Yeah. And young, like, Islander boys were real humble there and just were loving it. And I was like, yeah. wow, like, these boys don't give a shit that the yeah, facility's but, like this. They're just loving it. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm not going to sit and be a sook about it. Let's just, and yeah. I ended up enjoying it too. Enjoying it. Um, now I wish I was training because I live around the corner. So I'd rather train <laughs> there now. Anyway, fuck. but so yeah, that was a, and then it was weird because I hadn't played off the bench in you know, four, three years at Paramount. I was yep. always a starter. And I came, Nathan Fremm was a hooker. So yep. my first three games with the Titans, I was off the bench. Yep. And I, I was the worst because like I'd sit on the bench. The first game, I was sitting on the bench for the first 18 minutes and I went on and played the rest of the game. But because yep. I was that nervous on the bench, my legs were like jelly. So you get on yeah, and, you're and you literally get the half time and it feels like you've just played a 100 minute game. Like yep. you're absolutely cooked. And then yep. I think after three games, yeah, the fourth game, I ended up starting for the rest of the year. So. Yep. But we ended up making the finals, and was that so? That was that due to your form pushing friend to the bench. Or oh, I think that... it was always the plan. Like I didn't yeah, really yeah, sign up here for, to come off the bench, but yeah. I wasn't saying anything. I was. I knew I was going to get me opportunity eventually. I just yeah. obviously he's a, he's a, he was the captain too, and yeah. the hook, and I was just going to buy my time. And you know what I mean. So when I finally made the move, it, it worked out well, like for myself. But um, yeah, we ended up making the finals, and we lost the Broncos. You know, we should have beaten them up twelve nil, and yeah. sort of choked a bit there. But it ended up being a half decent year. It's like, well, you know, come from power and end up playing finals game, which I hadn't done in yeah you know, since two thousand twelve. And they so. definitely weren't going to play finals because they got the car. Yeah, they, yeah, exactly. So it ended up being like a yep. pretty good year. And so two thousand seventeen rolls around. And I'm, I'd, I'd assume that this is, even though those ten games are the best for you, like 2017, like you end up playing for your state. So that's you know, it's a funny year. Like I had the best preseason I've had in my probably since that first year of first grade, yep. 2010, 11 preseason. Yeah, was yeah fit, strong, like just had a Mickey preseason. I like, felt like mad. I was yep. like, Ready man, to you, go. you walk around like the last child and you're feeling puffed up. You know, like yeah, I'm yeah, a small yeah. fella, but yeah, you're fit. You're, you're, you're being busting, pumping weights, old yep. school weights all preseason. You're fit. Like you just feel. Yeah. You got that summer tan. You're like, Mate, you're, you're, loving, you're, you're loving. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're loving it. And um, yeah, dislocated my shoulder in that last trial. Yeah, just unfortunate. Just slipped. I've shown you before. Yeah. Slipped off and landed on the ground. And one of my front rollers slipped off and landed on top and it popped out. Um, yeah, so then I, that was bad. I come off. I was in New Zealand. Like I was depressed as shit. I was like, here we go. Like I've just had the best se- preseason. Yep. Going to be out a year. And they said, oh, had a scan. They're like, yeah, you've done this, done that. They said, we'll just rehab you for eight weeks, see how you go, yep. and then go from there. So I was like, fuck. So I got a. Kane LG does it. Like without telling any secrets, he has a little whiteboard and he writes his goals, you know, yep. for the year. So I was like, fuck, I'm going to do it. So I was put round eight, uh, round seven return because it was, oh, sorry, round six, I think it was. Round it was six. Two weeks before the season started last year. Yeah, time. so yep. it must have been round seven then or yep. whatever it was. I think it was round seven. It was like round seven return. Yep. Play state of origin. Something. I had me other couple of things. I always have winner comp, but yep. it's obviously very tough, you know, because yep. it's a team thing, but it's always a goal. Yep. Um, so I rehab the shit out of it and then had the seatbelt brace, the Thurston one where it's strapped around your oh, groin yeah, and it comes yeah, across yeah. and you can't even move your oh, arm. Oh my God. Um, yeah, and you're like that, ah, yeah. yeah. And um, so I come back around seven and I played yeah, five games and then made Origin, yeah, yeah. So So what was, I mean, those five games, you obviously played well enough to get picked for Origin. Like what was the phone call like? How did it all happen? Was it? Yeah, was it? it was a weird one. Oh, yeah, so I played, I think we played, I think we played, we, we, we didn't, I think what made it probably look better is that we didn't start real well for the year. I think we yep. won one out of five games one out of six when I come back and then we'll, we should have beat the Broncos we've got charged down and Matt Gillette passed to James Roberts with a minute to go Yeah, oh, uh, with yeah, like 30 right. seconds yep. to go and they scored off a sign to beat us so it was yep. that game then we beat the Sharks a week later who were the defending premiers yep. um, then we beat Storm in yep. that epic game at Suncorp then we oh, beat yep. Newcastle so we went on like a little run yep. so I was like they're probably thinking here we go he's come back and he's actually done something you know what I mean we probably did it and then um, <laughs> yeah played one more game against Manly I played literally five games and yep. then um and then he got the phone call, yeah. What was the phone call like? Oh, well, Anthony Frankie was the team manager. So he rang me on the Sunday night. It was like, oh, you're in the squad, blah, blah. We don't know if you're playing it yet. But just, you know, I was like, well, fuck, fine, yeah. Am I playing or not? Yeah, like, yeah, I don't Because yeah. I didn't know. I didn't even ring my mum because I wasn't even that excited because I was like, I don't want to get my hopes up. Yeah, and yeah. And then I got down there on the Monday and then that's when they told me I was playing. That's when I sort of relaxed after that. I went, yeah, hell And shit. so what was that feeling like? I mean, because you've it's fucking ups and downs. Like, you know, not only injuries that you've had that are quite dramatic and you've played on with them, but you know, clubs and moving on. Yeah, and, you know, it's, get a yeah it's just crazy, man. Like, I, the way they're going now and the way I've sort of played start at the start of this year, I probably, you know, I was below par, so I probably might not even get that opportunity again. But, yeah, um, yeah that, 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 yeah, that, that series I played last year in the first game in particular, like, you know, I just, I loved it, yeah. Yeah. Unbelievable feeling, like, getting told you're playing Origin is a sort of a childhood dream, I guess. Yep. And so you go into camp, is there anything you remember from camp that was unique or... 
I just remember crying in front of everyone because they <laughs> they said, all right, Laurie Daly sat us down. I'm so emotional, man. I get so worked up. And they're like, all right, go around the team. Like, what does it mean for you to be here? What does it mean to your friends or family? And then they went around and asked everyone. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm gone here. I knew straight away. As soon as they hit me, I just started crying. Like, because it meant so much to me. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it's the, like, besides my having my two kids, it was the best feeling in the world. Like, yeah, the, my, yeah. My, ultimate like yeah uh, cheat is my childhood dream like, yeah when you've dreamt of something your whole life fucking oath fucking oath besides my debut like it's yeah. massive yeah so yeah. I was so emotional and then <laughs> um and we played at Suncorp and then before they we had a team meeting all in our suits and then my mum and my partner walk in yep. with oh, my son and I was like what the fuck are they doing here yeah. Laurie's like you know Pam, Jay can you get up here to present a jersey and I just started crying <laughs> again like I even made like the like the noise like I'm just crying and I remember James Bond like bro stop crying stop crying you're gonna dehydrate yourself you know what I mean <laughs> you're I was like oh man like I just say so my mum was crying Jay was crying I was like wow <laughs> and that first game was like the hardest thing I've ever been the hardest yeah. thing I've ever been through in my life like yeah. the the level I had to push myself to during that game yeah. was oh, I don't think I've ever been that more fatigued especially that first half Yep. It was the quickest game ever. I remember Cooper Cronk saying it's the fastest game of rugby league he's ever played. Yep. I was like, for someone like him to it say that, yeah. it made me feel like, wow, you can you can do it. Matching you know? with him kind of thing. So um, it was a bit of up and down series. That first game, I thought I played pretty good. And yep. then second game, I didn't play all that well. I didn't play bad. I stuck to the game plan. Yep. But we had them we up. And then right. they scored with three minutes ago. And then yep. the third game, we just got absolutely pumped. Like yep. We made no meters up the middle. Yep. I didn't have any runs. Cameron Smith made... Three metres the first game, four metres the second game. So he made seven metres. Yeah. And the third game, he absolutely put on a clinic. Like, yeah. it's the best performance I've ever seen. Like, he That's just went 100%. bang, 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 bang. I was like, yeah. holy shit. The maestro shit. just yeah, coming out of Woodsy nowhere. Woodsy and Fafita both made 50 metres each. Like, yeah, which like is unheard got, of for those. Which is unheard of. Like, yeah. I had no runs. Like, I'd say everyone's like, ah, oh, you're spastic. I was like, oh, fuck, fair enough. But yeah. like, there's not much you can do as a hooker when you yeah. get hammered. And, like, literally, Cameron Smith was just playing like he was playing touch footy yeah yeah and it was, I was just like holy shit it's and like all of a sudden he became the strongest man in history and was yeah just he was just like going shit. through he yeah. was just i was like this is that's why he's the goat you know what yeah. i mean so yeah um it was an up and down series i just look back and go oh, if we would have won that second game which we should have they, they literally scored two tries with like five minutes to go and i was just like you wow. were, were dominating the game the whole game 65 I know. Minutes I was like, or something holy like shit and then that's 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 footy sometimes, yeah, and then obviously they've come in with a new new staff and new yep. system and new team, and you know that's how how it rolls. But I can always look back and say, well, even if I don't get picked again, I can say, well, I achieved I achieved something that I've always wanted to, and yep. I'm not happy with just playing the three games. I'd love to play more, but yep. fuck, I can hold my head high and say I worked hard to get there because which I did. Hundred oh fucking oh. And what about when you put that blue jersey on for the first time? It comes on, you're just sitting there, and you look down, you're like, I'm in the fucking. Co- it's crazy, man. Yeah, like you're looking up at Suncorp, and it's just. Rednecks in Britain, <laughs> their own jerseys everywhere. He's looking at it, and he's like, How good is it? I haven't watched it. I, I took it off and took it straight to frame and place and got it framed. It's in my man cave. Oh, really? Like, Immediately. Dirt on it. They had yeah. to like spray it with like fucking Scotch Guard or something because they said it'll get moldy. Like, because you haven't oh, watched yeah, it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, do you want to watch it? Like, no, no I way. want to see the grass stains on it. So, 100%. Um, it's right next to me, man cave. There, what about the I'm, anthem and that with the boys and that? Was yeah, that it's like? crazy. It looks like I don't like them because everyone's got their arms around, but because I've got my shoulder brace on oh, you can't and my them. elbow strap, I'm like, I just end up standing like that. So everyone's oh, like, so nice and arrogant, tight. Just arrogant <laughs> and derrick at the front. Like, <laughs> but I physically can't lift my arm up with that brace and my elbow strap, so I can't even <laughs> so I just stand like that. But yeah. It'd be worse if you were fucking standing like that, bro. I know. It's a whole double stand. But it's a weird feeling because like Suncorp's, you run out and the atmosphere there is yeah. unbelievable. Like 52,000 people, like on all, Mar- all on top of you. And then you go to um, ANZ where you yeah. run out and you look up and it just yeah. goes and goes and goes and goes and it's just all blue and you're like, yeah. holy shit, like it's a complete yeah. dip. Like at Suncorp, you hear the fireworks and the smoke and you can, it's hot and then yeah. um, ANZ's a bit cooler but because it's a bigger stadium but there's just, you just look up and you can just see people the, all the way around. 100%. Like, and yeah. they're all for you so it's yeah. like two different atmospheres yeah. like it's crazy. And like it's two, like you like both of them because it's like fuck you, you know. Yeah, like, the one they're like, like fuck you, you and, you, and, and you love like, it and the other yeah. one they're all supporting you. Yeah, and you love it as well. So you know. I just wish we mo- won that. Everyone can say I wish we won that game and won yeah, that game yeah. but that was probably the game that would have been nice to win a series. At least you, know? you, you know, that first game you got that victory, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. So I can, yeah, can always have that one, I guess. Hey, fuck, hasn't been good for fucking what 14 years yeah or I just, as I said to someone the other day um, I'm getting caught now sorry <laughs> I said oh, I wish um, wish Smith Thurston Cronk and that retired last year oh 100% <laughs> like I'm not, not credit to New South Wales they've had a great side but yeah. those those blokes you know Slater finishing up like those that's three out of your four spine you know what I mean not playing 
well, anymore. Yeah, and like, that's huge. Like, yeah, you know, I, I honestly think if not saying McCulloch's had a pretty good series, but I think if Smith was there, he might have oh. helped Ben Hunt the last game with a couple. Yep. Like, yeah, Smith would have jumped out, put his little kicks in for Slater. Yeah, he would have kicked down on the third tackle. Like, yep. you know what I mean? Oh, and McCulloch even, is that kind of player. Like, he's, yep. a, he's a massive player yep. for Queensland. And he will be. I just think if they had those like Thurston and Cronk as well. Like, I don't know if New South Wales win. I'm not sure, but yeah. I'm just saying I'm not being a suki prick going. Oh, we, you know, we lost that. I'm just saying yeah. like they're a massive difference. And this oh, is man. New South Wales's time now to just run with it. Hundred percent, and also build confidence in yeah, their ability. You know, and it's yeah. just it's it's. I always say this to people like with like the New South Wales and like how you know you lost for so many in a row. It's like people will think, oh, like you know, oh, they've got the greatest seven Queensland or whatever. But it's not just like they don't just have the greatest seven ever. They got the greatest nine ever, the greatest six ever, the greatest center ever. Greatest right, one. Greatest. Greatest one ever, yeah. Petro Sivanasiva, yeah. Webke before That's him, I mean, yeah. Matt Scott. Like, there's a fuck, nearly a team of goats. Like, how are you expected to? You remember, like, Smith and Cronk, and they've been playing against since they've been 19. Yeah. So they play. That's over 300 first grade games together. Like, I was talking to Craig Hodges, our assistant coach. He was like, over 300 first grade together. That means, you know, from playing under 19 together. So all those trainings together, they yep. probably had over a thousand training sessions together. Like yep. more because yeah, you're more. doing five a week yep. for a whole year. You know what I mean? 100%. Like times out of 40 weeks, you're doing 200 a year. Like They wouldn't even need to put, they, put they calls would, to each other. Like, they they would know each other's game spin it. that much. It's yep. like myself and Ash Taylor playing for 15 years together. Like yep. you'd know, know each other's game inside now. You would honestly, you would know like by the way that how fast he's running onto the ball, what play he's going to do. Exactly. Or how, how he's talk, like, you know, yeah, like that's combinations point. like myself and Ash are still working. We've been playing for three years and we're starting to get those calls and we're getting comfy with each other. Yeah. But that's two and a half years of it. That's, they've been doing it for, yeah. you know, so, yeah. so many years. So. Would have been, it would have been, I still reckon it would have been really close, but it would have been really interesting. Even if they just had one of those guys, Thurston or Smith, to do what Maloney did and just like chill everything now. Yeah. That would have been real play, interesting yeah, to see so. what happened. I think it's New South Wales time now. I think they'll, I'll run away with it you now for the next couple of years, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, it's going to be That's my opinion, you know, I could be wrong. But. Yeah, I, I think they've got the potential to do it, definitely, especially if they get confidence. Yeah, I think 100%. confidence has been a big issue for New South Wales. As soon as, like, something happens, like, chink in the armour, and they look across and they're like, fuck, like, what's going on? How do we get away out of this? And all of a sudden, Queensland will just, like, steamrolling, steamrolling. Yeah, 100%. And I think that, uh, yeah, I, I, love, I love Queensland. I mean, I love New South Wales forward pack at the moment. Like, just the the depth of like different ways they can play they can play up tempo they can play aggressive yeah, they, they can, can just chill, grind it yeah, out play a bit of skill, so. so it's going to be interesting it's going to yeah. be interesting and, all, and their back line as well fuck I mean Latrell Mitchell freak yeah I know freak the black line, <laughs> the black line. Um, okay so okay the next so you're 27 now so the next 12 months how is that 27 you say or 28 yeah 27 27 yeah. so the next 12 months go perfectly for you what, where, where are you sitting what are you doing uh, I'd love to be playing finals footy, to be honest. Yeah, yep. I obviously want to win a competition. And I, I know we've got a side up here that can can rattle the competition. It's just uh, very inconsistent at times. So, I'm um, in a perfect world. I'd love to finish off the year really strongly and, and um, yep. you know, keep working on those combinations and um, still try and push for the eight, which is going to be tough. But we can, you know, it's mathematically still a chance. So, we're going to be obviously going for there. And then, um, yeah, going forward, good preseason. I think... Um, Every time I've had a really, even though I hate preseason because they're so long, I think they're too long. But yeah, it's every time I've had a solid preseason, I've had a decent year in that, that year because yep. I think it's a, you know, you're doing weights for four months straight, you, you're running for four months straight, you pass and perform, you contact, yep. everything just rolls in and you get to the season and you're ready to go. Whereas this year I had a bit of a disruptive one with my shoulder, Rico, like yep. didn't really get it to the last trial. So it's a lot of pressure to just get in round one and ready to go. 100%. It's not so, like you're on the wing either. You need to be in the middle yeah, fucking and throwing balls. Think, yeah, it just takes a long time passing, yep. tackling combinations everything so yep. um that's yeah if i could have a perfect world the next 12 months will be yeah obviously sitting in the top eight next year and um yep. at this time of the year and, and obviously yeah finish this year strong good pre-season um and then yeah this time if you ask me 12 months yeah sitting comfortably in the top eight i think and so what do you think for the titans you know it's been a, a tough i guess they're a tough nrl side because they just never seem to get that squad together that can really like build what do you think over the next few years you need to do to get that foundation you know you're starting to build it you got yourself ash taylor you know you've got a young six that's just come through that's doing pretty well but he's still young so he's untested you know if you were to get a six you'd be kind of nearly there so what, what do you think you need to yeah it's just it's disappointing because like uh, yesterday's result 34 nil we haven't been out all year like we yep. had a uh, ask from the dragons in round three but yep. that was from over trying like there wasn't um, a lack of effort that was from 
shooting out the line trying to solve things. And yep. so we never really gave up. We just got hammered. Whereas yep. every other game this year, we've been in the contest. Yep. Um, you know, we've lost 9 8 to the Shark or 10 9 to the Shark. We've lost 18 16 to the South. So we've always been in games because yep. that's the type of team we are. We're a very tough, resilient Even side. Even Storm for a bit there, you were fucking. Yeah, well, we, we were winning 14 8. We went through and draw the fullback and stuff the pass. That would have been 20 to 8. Yeah. So even that game will ride into the last 10 minutes. Um, it's just disappointing because yesterday was sort of the first time this year where we just let, yourself down, let ourselves down and, yep. and didn't um, didn't try as much as we should have, you know yep. what I mean? Um, so, yeah, going forward, um, we just got to keep working on it because you know, we're known for being a gritty side. I know certain sides get nervous about us because... But it's, oh, I don't know what Titans team showing up today. You don't want to have that reputation. You want to yeah. be like, fuck, we're up against Titans this week. It's going to be a hard it's game. Going to be tough. You don't want to be going, oh, boys, be careful because when they're on, they're on. Like, that's yeah, a shit. Yeah, shit. Because I've, I've that, said yeah. that about other teams before when you've played them. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know? it's like South probably 10 years ago. You were just yeah, like, fuck, like, just don't know what you're going to get. You don't yeah. know, yeah. So you don't want that reputation. You want to be, you know, yeah. oh, here we go. It's going to be a solid game this week. And so what do you reckon? Um, it's Garth, isn't it? Garth Brennan? Yep. What do you, is there anything different that you feel he brings that is is po- like to the team that you're feeling that is a positive like to the environment? As yeah, he's just he's a very hard, um, hard honest bloke. You know what I mean? Like um, he you know loves a beer and he's like a larrikin and loves a joke and that, which is why he gets along with the boys so well. But he's very tough and strict at times, which you need. I mean, you can't always be mates with your no, coach. 100%. Um, he just wants us working hard and sort of disappointing when we don't because it, you know, it look, falls back on him, but even though he's not the blame. like yep. So yesterday's result and yesterday's performance is, you know, he's upset about that because we just didn't live, live it to the standards that we've been setting. Yep. So uh, without bagging us, we're not a team of superstars. We're a team of hard workers. And yep. when, you know, I was explaining to someone like when Melbourne Storm, when they had their big four, like if two or three blokes were off, they had enough caliber, enough fire in there. Yeah. They can just they can get through wins. Whereas yep. I'm not saying we don't have supers. I'm just saying that our team isn't like that. We're a team of gritty hard workers. So yep. when five or six blokes are off, yep. we're off, and yep. we can't cover that those numbers. I'm not, yep. not bagging the team. I think most footy people would understand what I'm saying. Yeah, we need like because we're such a hard gritty side. We need all of us to be on, or you know, 15 out of the 17 blokes to be on. Yep. Whereas we can't have six or seven blokes off because it's yep. just too big a number for us to catch up to. So. Yep. Um, we're just trying to minimise that, those gaps and try and have everyone on at the same time. And that's when we do that, we're on and we, we put a lot of points on teams. And that's how the, I guess the salary cap works is like you, you build that hardworking team that attracts one or two superstars. So like, for example, build one or two team like the hardworking team, a guy like yourself, guy like Ash Taylor comes down and then you keep building and then you attract another superstar. Yeah, and before well, you fucking know it, You've got four or five yeah, superstars. Yeah, that's I me. Mean. Ash is our number one man now, yeah. so yeah. you know he was obviously a bit disappointed with his uh, performance yesterday. But you know he's a young half and a lot of pressure on him. So hopefully he bounces back this week. Um, and so I ask, actually, what is the best prank you've ever seen with the boys that you can talk about? Best prank. Um, I'm just trying to think. It always you. stumps the boys. Yeah, I'm just trying. <laughs> I should pre pre send this. I'm fucking such an idiot. I don't. But oh fuck. Um, I couldn't tell you, man. That's a hard one. Any fake fake numbers texting people? Oh, actually, here we go. Yeah, the best one was at um at South. So there was this. I think I got banned this app. It was a, a app right where, say, I had your number on a dead and Kemp, right? Yeah. And then I had um, Ash Taylor's number as well. Yeah. I could download this app and I would, and say Ash had your number right yeah. and I'd send Ash a message from my phone yeah. and he'd get the message and it'd come up then in camp <laughs> and it'd be like, hey, bro, can you do the show yeah. for me this week, for example? And he'd be yeah. like, yeah, sweet. But when he replies, it'd go back to the real person, yeah. not to me. So yeah. at South, Dylan Farrell and uh, Mitch Bucket, is a uh, bloke who plays in the, for Wyndham, I think, up in the Q Cup now, yeah. they got downloaded this app and they were like, <laughs> So they, I think they messaged the Sato first. You know, they're like, "Hey John, it's, oh hey Sato, it's Madge. We're trying to build trust and culture in this team. Um, with, you cannot say a word. I want you to just get up and do ten burpees now." And all of a sudden, you just see Sato just out of nowhere, bang, start doing ten burpees or ten star jumps, whatever it was. You know what I mean? And everyone's like, "What the fuck are you doing, mate?" He's like, "No, no, nothing, nothing." And then they message the next guy and go, um, "I want you to fucking uh, do twenty five push ups out of nowhere." So that you'd be at lunch and they just boom, start doing push ups. Like, What's going on? And I'm like being a sookie, like big ego. I'm like, nah, I'm not doing this shit. Nah, yeah. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. They're like, bro, you have to if you get I'm like, nah. And they're like, all right. Um, they message seven blokes. They go, go out in the field and do a tri- uh, pyramid. So that's when you've got to get four blokes, then three, then two. You know what I mean? Like, and the blokes yeah. are like going, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, it got real bad. Like blokes are doing that all up. But he hadn't told anyone. He started getting people like doing the weirdest shit at training. <laughs> and anyway, he messaged his champ. Champs, I think he's come back from injury bow champ. So he's just finished training. He's gone home and then he's got a message saying, hey, man, I need you to come back now. I need to have oh, a, no I need to way. do something. 
Chance, like, what the fuck? So he rings up the number, Madge McGuire, and he's like, Madge, Madge, he goes, what the fuck are you talking about, mate? He's like, mate, you just said, he goes, mate, I didn't send you shit. Like, <laughs> leave me alone. And he's like, oh, so I end up finding out. Imagine it ringing everyone saying, listen, whoever's got it, stop me, you know what I mean? Um, but it could have been bad because he could have said that to your missus. Or to 100%. Your, a chick could have sent to you saying, blah, 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 I know you spoke to that girl or something. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you've gone, no, nah, no, nah, you know, or oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. And it's someone else. Like, Get someone killed. So, 100%. 100 percent. Literally I killed. That was, yeah, it was pretty funny. Um, Fuck. Well, so when did he own up to? It? When did he own up? To I don't know. I think he ended up just going. Yeah, it was me, boys, for a laugh. <laughs> oh. If it wasn't for Champ bringing up Madge, it would have kept going. So. Did you get the video of the dudes doing the pyramid? Nah, it was like during the weight session at the cafe, like just <laughs> random, just shit, just drop down, do stuff. So it was just weird. <laughs> oh fuck, that is a good one. That is yeah, a fucking so. real good one. Um, okay, favorite rapper of all time? If you're a rap man. No, I'm not really a rap man, eh? I'm just, I'm more just everything. Just pop, whatever. Yeah, I listen to everything. Okay, favorite, yeah. favorite artist of all time that you can throw on, you know, you're going to like, enjoy it. Ah, uh, fuck. Um, or one of the favorite, doesn't have to be the number one. Yeah, I'm in a 660 at the moment, yeah. 660? Yeah, I don't even know what it is. Yeah, no. it's just a Kiwi band, man. They're, they're, the, they're the music, that's the songs for me at the moment. Really? 660? Yeah, I'm relaxing. I listen to literally everything, like, I don't yeah. really have a favorite genre or anything, but. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. You got me stumped with these big questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm in the 660 at the moment. Yeah. All right, yeah. go to that. Um, favorite movie of all time? Uh, forgetting Sarah Marshall. Forgetting Sarah Marshall? Yeah. Fuck, that is a good movie. Yeah. I love the bit where he's like, pew, pew. <laughs> pew, pew, pew. <laughs> so fucking weird. And you're just like, what the fuck is yeah, going on? <laughs> oh, fuck, forgetting Sarah Marshall, Russell Brand. What about, yeah, when you're singing the song, it's like, yeah, fucking great movie. Um, Yeah, fuck, thanks so much for coming on, brother. Oh, actually, best... You know, it's you and Darcy that go back and forth a lot on the internet, yeah. uh, on, on Twitter and that. What's the best spray where you've actually been like, fuck, he's got me. That was fucking, that, uh, that cut me a little bit. He gets me on Facebook the most. Of, like, on Facebook? No one, no one would see the Facebook ones because you got to be like, Yeah, yeah. So it'd be like, um, you know, it'd be like, I think it was one the other day. It was a bit of a shit, not a funny thing. It was like, um, man man playing with himself in, 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 a, in a at a park you know inappropriately yeah. and he's like yeah. if you've seen this man or know this man uh, please call crime stoppers and he's yeah. like Nathan Peets you know hand yourself in your sick like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but like, there's like 20,000 comments like so people just go the fuck yeah, like, yeah, yeah, come they, on, they know it's not me yeah. but like you know like Still. it was it was literally stories I had, like yeah like man inappropriately touching himself <laughs> in a public area if you know this man please ta- uh, please um report him and call crime stoppers like Nathan Peets hand yourself in your sicko you know what I mean so <laughs> Um, the funny thing is like bro like I've, like people know my, like they see that name, yeah they like, see my hey you weirdo so <laughs> we've spoken about we want to do like a podcast like sort of start yeah. a podcast you know one day and then sort of build our way into the media somehow after our time is, really, um, is he still down south he's in Toronto he's in Toronto now because yeah, yeah the, the, earlier, the, the earlier you started the better bro because yeah, at exactly. the moment you're in a position where you can do it for free and like yeah because I'm not too really sure what I want to do in my life after footy I sort of wasn't real good at school and got kicked out of them so <laughs> sort of put my eggs in the one basket. What did you get kicked out of school for? Oh, I got expelled from both schools. So it was just, I was just, it wasn't bad. I just the class clown, you know what I mean? I just, just, just didn't give a fuck. Just didn't give a fuck, yeah. yeah. I was just, just an idiot and just, just mucked around too much. So I remember the principal saying, mate, you expel, he goes, I think you should get a job at Coles stacking shelves or something, you know, to get, I said, fuck you. And I got up and walked out. Well, you told the principal, yeah, fuck he goes, I was already expelled anyway. So I might as well go out with the bang, tell the boys for a laugh. But I remember him saying, you go stack shelves at Coles. I'm not saying it's a bad job because people do that for a living to provide for their family. I'm yeah. saying, 16 year old, 15 year old, I'm not fucking doing that. Yeah. So I went and worked with my dad and then sort of put my eggs in the one basket. So I've sort of yeah. been lucky and I, I've worked hard to get there, but that's something I want to do in the future is probably around something to do with footy, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know anything else. So <laughs> um, I, I sort of, I think it's, you know, I could repay footy back for what it's given me. Oh, 100%. So, no, I agree. But yeah, um, we have a good laugh I and mean, yeah, think about doing like a podcast or something. Man, you know it would be good because you've got such good banter with each other is like, um, you review each week but spraying the blokes but in a joking way yeah or spray blokes that we know you know yeah what I mean? yeah, so yeah. No like, being... but just like you can set it up in a way where like if you get cut about it bro like you know i'm just joking yeah like, you know what i mean like so... that's the thing about me these days a lot of blokes like who play footy or play cricket like who who are still playing or just retired and they're, they're commentator and they're bagging players oh, or bro, like yeah shit. Like like Michael Clark for example in the cricket like he just retired from Test cricket two years ago and he's like sprays people now when he's yeah. commentating I'm like mate you they used to be your teammates or yeah. like there's certain footy but I'm not going to name their names but yeah. who are playing and they're on the footy show or Fox blokes. Sports or whatever they are and they're like negging against blokes or saying this and I'm like mate you're still playing like yeah. like I'm not saying I don't talk about people behind their back about footy because everyone does I yeah. fucking see that tackle he made last night or whatever yeah. but but to publicly yeah I, 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 if I was doing this now or you asked me about it. You know, so and so, fucking John Smith, for example, whatever. Like, I'm not. I'd always. I'm. 
as Australian way, you're sort of humble about it. You don't yeah. go like, yeah, oh, yeah, he's fucking spastic. Like, yeah. you always go, oh, yeah, you know, he didn't play his best last night, but I know how good a player he is yeah, and he'll exactly. make up for it. Whereas exactly. some of these blokes these days are like, oh, yeah, that was a terrible performance. You should be embarrassed. And I'm like, you're still playing against him. 100%. Like, I t- like, when I started this, I was like, no matter what happens, I'm not bagging the boys yeah. in a negative way. Like, yeah. I'll say like, you know, maybe it was like, for example, good example, like, and he's a mate, like, because I played with him. Like, Ben Hunt, with everyone smashing him with the Queensland performance, like, like he didn't I don't even think he played that bad but like the, the kick on the third like yeah it was a bad kick one kick yeah it was one kick I just said about Asher Force it wasn't his best game yesterday yeah. he knows that but he'll be better for it like yeah. Yeah. you can say things like that but these blokes these days are like yeah yeah he played terrible though. his defence was shit I'm yeah, like, I was like mate. You, you know, you're still playing like. and also you know what ta- like you know that he doesn't he didn't mean to do that shit yeah, you know so. he's not out there fucking yeah bro I, yeah, I, so I totally was, agree I don't get that yeah, shit was, but yeah I reckon it'd be funny you too and it's but you know it's a G up like yeah. guys from the you could even put a fucking message at the start this is a parody or this is a yeah, this, is, this is a joke and then just just spray blokes like look at yeah. this cunt's haircut like look at this blah, blah. and um, no, nah, that'd be actually pretty funny that'd be really funny um, but yeah, thanks so much for coming on, All brother. Right, brother. Appreciate Welcome it. Man. Really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, good luck to the Titans. I, I think Gus is the best thing that's happened to you in a while. Like just fresh blood, but yeah. also, and I think you've got the the base to build something. So definitely, yeah, definitely going to be good times. But yeah, thank you so much, brother. Appreciate it. All right, brother. Cheers, mate.